Hello there. Welcome everyone to a Facebook Live here at Canine Country Academy. I'm Paula. I am the owner and head trainer of Canine Country Academy, and I'm coming to you live today to talk to our most recent apprentice. We thought it would be fun to interview her and talk about, you know, her journey so far. And it's been quite a different journey because of COVID. And so that will play into some of our discussion today. But I wanted to share this person with you and that will give you an opportunity to learn more about you getting involved in becoming a dog trainer because we actually offer an apprentice program and we are taking applications here soon. So let me go ahead and bring on Miss Kathy here. To switch on my little screens here. There's Kathy. Hi. Kathy, thanks for uh, hanging out with me. We were just talking about getting to do fun things today. We got to do Fast Cat, and her one of her dogs, Bunny, decided um, it was pretty cool. Yeah, she loved it. The second cool. time around. Second time around. Yeah, first time was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so Kathy, you know, we met just about a year ago, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it feels like I've known you much longer and um, you know, she's had quite the journey, as I said, just from the COVID standpoint, we've had to change things up, but we've been offering this apprentice program for the last two years. And um, I thought it'd be fun to chat about your journey. So thinking about a year ago, sounds like forever ago, where were you in your life, your career? Like where were you in the dog world or not in the dog world? Give us a little bit of backstory. So about a year ago, I was a stay-at-home mom with two kids, and um, I also had two dogs. I had Bunny, the one that ran the Fast Cat today, and she's the she's the one that had me like kind of looking out for dog training and any sort of support because she's a wild child. And um, but I was following you guys through VCA Falcon Village, my vet. And then your advertisement or your, um, I guess your ad for the apprenticeship came up and I signed up for it because my husband, Ali, was like, that sounds like something you'd be extremely interested in. And I was looking for something outside of my house and my children. So I know. <laughs> little did you know how beneficial that, that would be. in yes. <laughs> And to help, help the viewers kind of get a concept because you know, our program is fluid in the sense that, you know, you don't have to have like no job or you, you know, you don't have to be any particular type of person per se uh, mm -hmm. in life. Like how old are your kids? I, at that time I had a one and a half year old and a five year old and now two and six. Yeah. Um, and you know, that doesn't limit people, right? Like mm -hmm. your husband's very supportive and sweet and we enjoy it. And we're glad that he is part of our community as well. Uh, but you know, anybody can do this if yeah. they if they want to do it, which I think is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you talked about, you had kind of been watching us through your vet office. We love VCA Falcon Village. Uh, what was it, Kathy, that was like that pivotal moment? Because you kind of thought about maybe even just hiring us to work with your dogs. Yeah. And then it became like more serious to take our, our um, do you want to be a dog trainer workshop? Like what, what was that? push that you needed? So I've always been interested in dog training, um, but I just never followed through with it. And then I didn't know that you can do apprenticeships or I wasn't sure what the avenues were for dog training. And so I didn't actually think it was something that I could do, but then the workshop came up and I was like, this seems really interesting. And I sent it to my husband and I was like, should I do this? And he's like, absolutely, 100%. I'm not even sure why you're asking me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Sometimes we do that, right? Like we already know the answer is yes, but we just want someone else to like move yeah. us along in that. So long as I'm short, it was seeing your uh, the workshop pop up. And I was like, oh, so people actually learn this way. So. Yes, yes. And our workshop, it's going to be slightly different going forward, but our workshop last year was basically two days mm -hmm. of observation, some hands-on, some kind of book work, if you will, to let people see what it's like. Because most people, Kathy, like you had, like, you know, there's dog trainers out there, but how do they become dog trainers? Mm -hmm. Right? You didn't know. And there are several different paths. 
ours is just one. There's also other organizations who do it. There's people who do different types of apprenticeships or mentor programs. Um, but that was our first step. And we got to meet you and several other people at that. And it was really fun because we got to know each other and we got to hang out with a bunch of different dogs and our dog clients. Uh, we watched classes and one-on-ones. And then do you remember the dog that you handled for your like hands-on exercise? Yes, Zeus. <laughs> you had handsome Zeus, the collie. Yep. yep. And he was like, okay, lady. <laughs> went out to pet him and he like dodged it. And you, I remember you going like, well, why do you think he dodged that pet? And I was like, uh, I don't think he liked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know, thinking about that, Kathy, like, who were you a year ago when it came to handling dogs and like touching them and who are you today <laughs> so i um a year ago i had i would be all over the dogs i would immediately approach them puppies oh my god i am i was a nightmare person that person, <laughs> oh no she's coming <laughs> um but now after a lot of impulse control taught from you guys today, <laughs> i do kind of keep my distance and i kind of keep an eye out for body language and sometimes I ask for permission. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I, I'm much better at it now. I still do exude social pressure, I think. So where dogs are like, I know you want something. <laughs> exactly. Reach out anymore. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, thank you for training this one human. Exactly. <laughs> <That's not laughs> <the thing. laughs> but you know, you have that love of dogs and that's a positive thing. That's something mm -hmm. important to look for. But that was definitely something early on that we talked about. I was like, no touching <laughs> the dogs. <laughs> yes. Because so often is, is now you know and you've been able to help others is you see it, you know, in the dogs that you work with. The owners who handle their dogs you know our dogs have become human petting posts, especially like when we're stressed. And not all the dogs like it. And it's it is difficult, right, Kathy, to tell. How do you like your own internal self? You're like, I know. <laughs> How do you tell the other person, right? Like, so do you think your dog likes that? Yeah, I've seen it in my puppy classes, and I've just, I kind of just now see it everywhere, and I'm just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you can't unsee those things. <laughs> what would you say, you know, you and I have talked offline about, you know, where you are in your journey. Things have, not been as easy because of COVID and you know now the kids aren't going to school and you know there's there's just life stuff right like that's really important to us our team is not just about the work um where do you feel like you are in your journey for dog training like what are the, some of the things you're doing and you're enjoying uh so far so um so far I've been teaching puppy classes and I'm getting I'm becoming much more comfortable in, in it it's like I know I know this stuff, but the public speaking part really gets to me sometimes, but I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with it. The puppy socials I love because um, I love watching the puppies play and I'm getting much better at reading the body language and being like, this one needs a little bit of a break. <laughs> and, um, I think I would like to be more comfortable in my handling I think I think that's where COVID kind of put a hard stop to it where I have practice with my dogs and I've had practice with other dogs here and there there's a lot of dogs in my family mm -hmm. but um I think COVID it's kind of like interrupted that part because we were just starting to see dogs at the building where you would sit there and kind of coach me through it mm -hmm. that's where COVID kind of came through and but I have learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you have, and you've had to, you, you know, learn a lot more digitally. Yeah. Uh, you know, we do a lot of hands-on typically in our apprentice program, and I still think there's a lot. And, you know, Kathy is training for us, and we don't let people train that we don't feel are qualified. Mm -hmm. But there's so much, right, Kathy? There's so much to learn, and we should always be learning. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that hands-on experience is like, that's the stuff, right? Like, you could read all the books, you could watch all the videos. Mm -hmm. But really the having hands on and getting that feedback from myself or someone else on the team yeah. as to, you know, what to do. Mm -hmm. 
aside from COVID, okay, so like let's pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> what have what have you felt like has been the most challenging in taking that next step to you know really branching out and training other people and their dogs? The most challenging, I think, is um. How do I phrase it? I think it's trusting myself to explain that knowledge to other people. I've learned a lot and I understand it when it comes to me doing the work, but I think the hardest part was just kind of sharing that knowledge with other people. Mm -hmm. and, um, and trusting that I know what I'm doing, that I am now, I wouldn't say expert, expert, but I am like, a little bit on the expert level where people are coming to ask for help and thinking of myself in that level is a little bit harder for me to digest and understand that. <laughs> yes, so I have the knowledge to help these people and it takes time. And I think that just shows how important you feel like this is to educate others and make sure, you know, we're always giving the best information based on what we know at the time. And, uh, in thinking about that, what have you felt so far? I mean, your journey is still just, just infancy. Mm -hmm. What has been the most rewarding so far in getting to work with others? Um, honestly, it's the little tips I see in class where I will actually see it kind of click in the, um, the owner, the handler's eyes where they're just like, oh, that actually worked. Um, for example, in one of my puppy classes, there was a corgi who was high energy and we were doing loose leash walking, uh, um, stopping at the cones. And I told her to just kind of wait her out. And all of a sudden um, the corgi just looked at her and they just looked at each other and they were able to finish that last half of the um, walk really nicely. And the owner was just like, that was so nice. Like, and it was just a simple fact where I was like, just kind of wait her out, wait for her to check in with you. And I could see like the owner was really happy with what happened. And it was just like those little tidbits and moments in class where I feel like they learned something, the dogs have learned something. That's just really nice to see. Yeah, to see that what you're saying actually works. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I've shared with Kathy and I'll share with all of you watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hey to everybody, hey Carla, hey Jamie. Uh, hey, Peggy. Hey, Rachel. Is I still remember it was, you know, 10 years ago being a baby trainer. And I would have like long conversations with my mentor after the class. And then I would drive home 30 minutes from Decula and literally go through the entire class in my mind. I should have said this. I should have said that. I missed this. I hope I didn't offend that person. Like, you know, it's so normal. <laughs> and over time that lessens. I mean, maybe Rachel Anderson <laughs> can attest to that. But you're, you know, we're always growing as trainers, or we should be. And we're always gonna push Kathy to grow and learn new things and push her outside of her comfort zone. Uh, because you know, that's we're here to help others and that's how we help them. But you're right, those little magic moments are the best. Like mm -hmm. You know, we know it's possible or we have an idea it's possible. We've seen it somewhere else. And then the moment that someone else can see that and that connection in the relationship mm -hmm. is going to shift them forever, mm -hmm. forever. All right. So thinking about, you know, now you're you're almost 12 months into the program. You know, we're not saying like this is never done, guys. OK, like Kathy started training because she was ready to do the training for what she was at. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's more to come for Kathy. Uh, so there's so many different services that we offer. Who would be a good fit for this type of apprentice program? So. Uh, I've given thoughts on answer and it's really somebody who is you need to have a love for dogs but that's not the only thing it's also having um a love for teaching people right um because I, you guys say this all the time that it's teaching dogs is easy teaching the people is a hard part of the job because when the people learn the dogs tend to um, 
they tend to benefit from it. So I would say somebody who out the SCF is love for dogs, who um, would te loves teaching or doesn't mind the teaching part because they know and they understand that it's important. <laughs> um, it is in the beginning. I did, but when my kids were in school, I was dedicating a lot of my time. But it is kind of flexible enough to where you can fit it in. I know Rachel had a full time job while she was doing it. So I would say if you have, you can make the time and you have a passion for teaching dog training, then um, anyone can do it. If they can. You're right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I had a full-time job when I was apprenticing too. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how I did it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, back, back before COVID times, you know, Kathy got a couple times a week. You can audit as much as you want. Um, and obviously now we have to do it a little more mindfully, how many people and, and those sort of things, because we are still very, you know, aware of the situation, but you can audit as much as you want. She got on and audited the online classes when we went online, you know, eventually auditing private lessons, because we want you, Kathy, and whoever comes along the way to feel like they can handle everything, but it's not behavioral, like understand enough, but not, did not work with reactivity straight away. Right, but understand enough what are the things we're looking for to set the learners, human and dog, up for success and how to overcome challenges. Because sometimes it's really challenging to even young dogs in class that are having kind of a meltdown, you know, and how do we help people with that? Right. So having the people skills is real, as you said, willing to teach and the people skills is really important, but it is flexible. Uh, meeting with you know, myself and this coming year, we're going to meet with the team. We're going to have um, more mentors to really make sure we're rounding it out, but learning things like nose work and puppy and adolescent and impulse control um, and all of the different aspects of, you know, being a solid dog trainer. Mm -hmm. Is there anything about the program that surprised you that you didn't expect? Um, honestly, I think part of what it, I didn't come in with really any expectations because I know I come from a grad school background. <laughs> like I, <laughs> grad school, I was writing a ton of papers. Um, I wasn't exactly sure what an apprenticeship was. So it was kind of like um, with the support of my husband, I kind of jumped on this. was like, I will go with the flow and uh, just do it. So it wasn't anything really surprising. I think um, what I underestimated was the people skills and the interaction with the people. Because for some reason, I just pictured working with dogs all day. <laughs> and I forgot that at the other end of the leash was a person coming for help. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, you know, I think our company is unique in that we really are people focused. I mean, we do love the dogs and we enjoy the dogs. But... Today was a really good example of that when we all went to Fast Cat and, you know, we go there and our team's there and people we know from other organizations are just, you know, previous students, current students. And, you know, that's what we're about is the community, the people. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make sure to advertise that, Kathy, for the future so people know. <laughs> not going to be okay with the people. <laughs> you know, and it's even though you are very much a people person and you take care of people, it's a lot of pressure to, mm -hmm. you know, make sure that you're giving them the right information and supporting them and their dog. Like we're not just training one species. We're training multiples and dealing with multiple emotions <laughs> along the way as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. I get it. So anything else, Kathy, that you can think of that you want to share if someone was thinking about, getting into this, you know, maybe, maybe they're kind of watching us as well and they need this little push. What would you tell someone or what are some things you'd like to share? Um, so I'd like to share that the Paula is like extremely supportive. The entire CCA family is extremely supportive. Um, there are times where I'm like, uh, I'm not sure if I'm actually cut out for this and they will tell you that um, this could be something you're working on, but you're at where you're need where you need to be. 
So it's an extremely supportive environment. Um, and if it's something that you want to do, do it. At least try out the workshop because um, through the workshop, you'll see kind of what the environment is, what you could possibly learn. And um, it'll give you a push in the right direction. Yeah. Very well said. And we have a question actually for you. Whoa. Carla wants to know, she knows you're still working through the program, but um, do you have a favorite service? I'll, I'll post it on here. A favorite service or one you're really excited to learn about? Um, I'd like to learn more about teaching nose work because I feel like so many dogs just benefit from doing nose work. Um, I've seen it help a lot of dogs. And I do <laughs> nose work with Bunny, which is uh, crazy. But um, And Barnut, which has got crazy too. Yes. <laughs> So I really like what a dog gets from those work and I'd like to teach that class, but that's something that will have to come later, I think, due to constraints. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I want to share with those who are watching, you know, we're we're slightly redesigning the apprentice program um, because of COVID and because every year I always look at our apprentice and you know I will be sitting down with Kathy soon and she doesn't know it but to get feedback from her and I did this with Rachel Anderson um, a year ago and said you know what would we do differently right and she might have a lot of different input because it's been a very different experience than we planned on being so virtual but uh, what our apprentice program entails is really getting the person ready to teach group classes to teach one-on-one -on -one basic obedience, manners, tricks, nose work as well. So and coming soon, basically up to the point of not dealing with any kind of reactivity, um, you know, impulse control, those kind of things. Yes. And I honestly would say we really need more people who are interested in barn hunt and dock diving. That's been a big growth this year. And uh, poor Rachel Anderson, she just can't teach 24 hours a day and we have enough interest. So that would, you know, be an additional piece of this, right? You have to have those core skills, learning about how to read dogs, how to help people, how to communicate with people, you know, conflict resolution on both ends of the leash, uh, how to run a class effectively and how to communicate outwardly and really being part of the team. You know, Kathy's part of the team, but when we have an apprentice come on board, they are a part of the team immediately whether they decide they want to stay with us, which is our hope, um, or they want to go off and do their own thing, I'm open to that as well. But the very first step, as Kathy said, is to join our, our dream of being a dog trainer workshop. This is going to be next month, and I'll put all the details in the comments. Um, but basically what it's going to be is a kickoff virtually with a Zoom on that Friday night. It's, oh gosh, I can't remember the dates. I'll put it in there. But it's early in January. The fee is $195. So we're going to kick off with an evening workshop to say, hey, this is what we're doing. This is what the flow is going to look like. And then we're going to do Saturday observations. So you get to observe some classes. Most of our classes are outside. So bundle up. And then uh, Sunday, we're also going to do some hands-on and some one-on-one. -on -one. As long as everything's going the way we plan, you know, you have to be ready to be you know, movable and know that things might get delayed or changed because of we want to keep people um, healthy along the way. So that's only 195. There's no requirement that you continue. We'll talk more about, you know, going forward, but you get to audit classes, you get to have some one on one with myself or one of our instructors to keep learning about all the different things. We have different modules for you. And uh, we hope to have an online platform as well. You can do some self-serve and it won't all be in person. So whether you're someone who's working full time, you're a mom like Kathy and um, you can do it if you wanna do it. And we want people who are committed and interested and uh, we're a cool team. Uh, we probably talk to each other 24 hours a day. <laughs> I feel like we need to warn people of that, right, Kathy? Like, so you do join the family, <laughs> at least for your apprentice time. And the apprentice program could be anywhere from six to 12 months. It really depends on the individual. While everyone's going to get the same information, they are going to have some customization because everyone has different things that they have strengths and weaknesses. And we want to make sure that we address that. And that's something that I love doing. I love coaching people to step outside their comfort zone 
people maybe who are a little more shy or who aren't sure how to explain something to someone, uh, that's something that we really enjoy doing. So let me see if we have any other questions before we wrap up our lovely chat here. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Oh, you have a question? <laughs> I have another question. I just wanted to say I love it. Uh, before I started the program, one of my worries was um, I had no background in animal training besides having my own dogs. And that was actually a huge fear of mine before starting this program. But the program actually sets it up that even without any knowledge, as long as you're dedicated and you're willing, they will set you up for success or you guys will set you up for success. <laughs> yes, yes. And it is, it is scary going into it because it's something new. You know, so many times, like, I, you know, no matter where you are in your life age-wise, like, learning something new is hard. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not supposed to be easy. You know, when little kids are learning to walk and crawl and all that, like, if they fell one time and they never got up again, like, how many people would not be around walking, right? Like, yeah. you have to take that step. Mm -hmm. And we while we do have a lot of hands-on, which is really important to us and what sets us apart from a lot of other um, academies, if you will, is there are reading assignments. I remember Kathy reading some books. We won't call it what book it is, but she was like, oh my gosh, I've messed up my dogs. And it's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, like we all learn, we all grow from this information. So, you know, reading dog books, reading, you know, mindset books that are really helpful for this as well. And then also being able to watch other people teach, watch other handlers, you know, the more you can observe, the better. And, uh, you know, eventually we can take some field trips too, Kathy. We can go watch dog parks and just hang out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so much more for you, right? Yeah. She gets the extended plan. <laughs> I know, but you know what? We made the best of it, right? We, yeah. we went online and and did a lot and this has been a very interesting year and kathy i thank you for <laughs> hanging in there along the way figuring it all out with us um it's she's a great addition to our team i don't want to make her blush but we really enjoy having kathy and it's been an honor to be able to have an apprentice such as yourself and rachel anderson and we have just have this amazing like cool team that um you know, we want, we're looking for people similar to that. Don't have to be like, definitely don't have to be like me, but, <laughs> but uh, if this is something you're interested in, I will post a link in the comments and in the description so you can check it out. If you have any questions, let us know. You can message or email is best and we can get you more information or answer any questions you all have. So thank you again, Kathy, for your time this mm -hmm. evening. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. I will uh, probably do some lives from Orlando, Florida next week at the Invitational for Fast Cat because we have several dogs we know that are going to be there. So that's pretty exciting. So we will see you guys soon. Bye.